thanks for joining me today. My name is Ann Crawford, and I'm the Reference and Adult Services Librarian at the Ponte Vedra Beach Branch Library. Today, we're going to present the Sisterhood of the Traveling Plants. If you've come to the Ponte Vedra Beach Branch Library before in the last 10 years, you know they're a very popular duo that presents flower arranging shows for us twice a year. The one that you'll get a, a chance to experience today will be the kind of show that you would have expected to see right before Thanksgiving, where you're learning all about how to make holiday arrangements for your home or office or anywhere you like. However, since we're in the middle of COVID-19 and we're not hosting programming in person at this time, we decided to come up with a different way to bring the sisterhood to you. So today's presentation, or presentations I should say, will differ in that you'll have an opportunity to work with the sisterhood hands-on from your home or anywhere that you have internet access. And you can either watch the program and enjoy it, or you can work with the sisterhood and step-by-step -step create the arrangements with them, or you can do both. And there'll be a materials list included in the program that you can then gather up those materials or buy whatever it is you need. And just like those home cooking shoes, shows at home, you too can create your own flower arrangements, like this one, for example. This is what your first flower arrangement ideally will look like when you're all done, and they're going to show you kind of what the end product is, and then they're going to turn it around, and they're going to show you step by step how you transform these ingredients into this beautiful flower arrangement, and most importantly, have fun doing it. I want to thank the friends of the Ponte Vedra Beach Branch Library today for making this programming possible. You'll have two different arrangements that you'll get an opportunity to make at home if you wish. One will be a Thanksgiving arrangement using a pumpkin or also known as a gourd and a holiday arrangement inspired by Downton Abbey. So again, thank you for the friends of the library of the Ponte Vedra Beach Branch Library more specifically for making today's presentation possible. Right after this introduction, you'll have the first list of items that you'll need to make the first arrangement, this one. Then you'll get to dive in with the sisterhood. After that, you'll get a second list of the materials you'll need to make the Down and Abbey arrangement. And then after that, you'll get a book list of all the different flower arranging books that we have in our library system that can help you step by step make these sorts of beautiful arrangements in your own home. So again, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to diving in with the sisterhood in just a moment. Hi, it's Kathy and Marilyn, and we're back. <laughs> Can you believe it? In a little bit different format. We're used to seeing you every fall to talk about the holidays that sweep us along towards the end of the year. And this time we're doing it in a way that you can not only watch us make the arrangements, but you can make them with us. We call this our heavy show because we use so many pumpkins. And we're doing our arrangement in a pumpkin today. And you can do that, or you could use a piece of pottery, whatever you want to do. But this is the pumpkin time of the year. As you can see, we've got many pumpkins here. This is a Japanese pumpkin. This is a gourd. That's a lovely green Hubbard pumpkin over there. Some of them are called squash. Some of them are called, um, we have an eggplant. That's true, we have an eggplant. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the other word for squash and I can't think of it right this moment. minute. Well, I think gourd. Yeah, gourd. I think so. But uh, this is the time of the year when not only is the vegetation, the vegetables in the farmer's markets that you can go to and visit, is it so beautiful because it's so colorful, but also the flowers of this season are those brilliant jewel tones. And so in some ways, this is the most fun time of the year to make an arrangement because it's very rewarding. It's, it's uplifting. And we need a little uplifting at this in point. The yes, right. <laughs> Marilyn is going to talk to you about how we prepared the pumpkin because her husband Charlie helps us with this and she's going to show you the tools <laughs> that made the pumpkin. Of mass instruction right. and destruction. Right. This is uh, an heirloom pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Really, really uh, difficult to cut through. 
So uh, the first thing I do is draw a little circle around the top. Of, I know about how big I need it to be. We do put a container, you know, something like a Cool Whip container in it. And then uh, floral foam. We're experimenting with using what is called chicken wire, floral wire, um, to keep everything still. So um, it has to be a certain size to fit your container. It, he loves to use this, and it, it is effective. I can't get a knife through this kind, so he calls this his drywall saw, and uh, it gets the job done. And from there, of course, you have the innards of the pumpkin, all the seeds, which can be saved and roasted if that you like to do that kind of thing. Very tasty. This is the best tool. It's an ice cream paddle. You can use a spoon if your pumpkin is smaller, but this is faster and more efficient, and you can get hold of it and pull everything right up. And uh, then put your Cool Whip or whatever container you have that's big enough down in there. Put to, uh, You have to have water in there, and you're good to go, wouldn't you say? The reason we use the plastic liner for the pumpkin is once you cut any vegetable, it's on its way to rotting. So in order to preserve the pumpkin for the longest period of time, yes. we have the plastic in there to keep the water from being in contact with the flesh of the pumpkin. And you can lift that plastic container with the flowers out and refrigerate the pumpkin again. So maybe it will last until Thanksgiving. Maybe it will be on your it Thanksgiving It will. If you table. can keep this cold, mm -hmm. you, you have it. And we've also been told to put Vaseline around the cut edge. Mm -hmm. And that, Alan Smith told us yes, that. Yes, P. Alan Smith. And he knows what he's doing. He does. Um, prevents deterioration. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, that's worth trying. Okay, one of our favorite designs, this gives you a chance to see two different things, is to take a palmetto, and that's what this is, just a saw palmetto, and Marilyn trimmed it down, and it forms one side for one arrangement, and the other side we're going to do a different arrangement. This side is a multicolored arrangement. It has the beautiful sunflower. It has the tulips that have been just bent back. This is just a regular tulip, and you just inverted the little leaves, and it looks almost like a crocus. In other words, you would take this one, and if you just bend it back gently, you see that's the effect. Mm -hmm. So it just gives you a little bit more mm -hmm. of a look of what the interior of the tulip looks like. We've got some hypericum berries up here. We've got, uh, I think we've got tulips. Yeah, tulips. We're gonna we've add got a marigold in mm -hmm. here. Protea. Protea. Yeah, the Protea. A Romesco uh, cauliflower, cauliflower, which right. we, we love incorporating fruits and vegetables in some arrangements. Mm -hmm. Now, if at the end you, you see, and we'll look at this when we're finished with it, if you see holes in, in spaces, that you can't tuck a flower in or it wouldn't look good. You can take some moss, and we have a bag of moss, and yes. we'll tuck it in and just cover up. We don't want anybody to see the mechanics of what we're doing. Or the but, cut edge. Right, the cut edge. But we want, them to, we want you to know that working with these gourds or pumpkins is great fun. It's a little bit of work, and you might have to get your husband to help you a little bit or your son or whoever. <laughs> uh, but once you get the hang of it, I think you'll you'll enjoy it and we'll show you several different ways we're doing it. Now we're going to work on the other side of the pumpkin. We'll show you what that looks like. It's all ready for prime time. It hasn't got anything in it right now. And what we're going to do on this side is we're going to do a more monochromatic arrangement. Now you're going to say, well, there's green and orange, but we consider green because it is the, the color of nature. We consider it a neutral. A neutral. Mm -hmm. So green is green doesn't count. Mm -hmm. So we'll work on this and we'll show you how we do it. Mm -hmm. And we'll grab the pieces and parts and then we'll turn it around and you'll see the monochromatic side of it. And okay. it's good to know we just make this up as we go around along. Right. We are not trained floral people with degrees in horticulture. Or we did discover that this side needs another tulip right. when we looked at it from back. 
Well, when you see something on camera, in fact, that's on a real, camera, yeah, it's different. That's a very yeah. good thing. Take a picture of your arrangement with your phone, and you'll see what you're missing. You'll mm -hmm. kind of see where holes are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't see it with your own eye, but when you take a picture of it, you'll see it. I think, okay. I think that's okay. Good. I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. I might so just trim it. We're working one more now with some wonderful um, crystal. Marigolds. Like, marigolds. Like super marigolds. Yes. Or like steroidal. Steroidal marigolds. Yes. And uh, they are a wonderful color. They're almost exactly the color of the pumpkin. And we're going to tuck those in. If you live in other parts of the country, um, Kathy and I look at magazines and we we drool over ranunculus, we drool over dahlias, <laughs> things that we uh, cannot grow in Florida, but we in Florida grow fantastic leaves and foliage. So there, there is balance. Uh, probably our most favorite magazine is Flower Magazine. What you'll love about this magazine is that it gives you the step-by-step -step how to create just what we're doing today. They give you a, a list of everything you need to do it, and then they show you how to build the infrastructure and then do the actual uh, arrangement. Another one is Martha Stewart Living. Uh, we find things, of course, Southern Living is probably our oldest uh, go-to from years ago, and sometimes things in Real Simple. Mm -hmm. And flower books, you'll notice on the table here, flower books at your local library. If you want to get into this, you can find anything you want at the local library in flower books. Probably our uh, one that got us started would have been Paula Prykey. And I know you, you, uh, this library here has a lot of Paula Prykey, and we like hers because she, uh, this is Judith Blaylock, but um, Paula Prykey breaks it down, gives you your flower list, tells you step by step how to do it. And if you are a beginner, you just, you really want that. And Autumn, of course, this is a wonderful one with this, the same type of thing, all kinds of ideas and uh, help along the way. Okay, this is coming around with mm -hmm. the oranges. Mm -hmm. And why don't you just... Maybe skip. we'll put a little foliage okay, uh, yeah. to come off the you back. Skewer those, guys. Uh, this, is, this is a cute thing we do. You know, you, you don't want to get a million vegetables and fruits and things. What did you call it this morning? Carmen Miranda, Carmen Miranda of the Carmen, Carmen Miranda, Miranda. <laughs> arrangement. Exactly. Let's do that. But <laughs> like we found three Brussels sprout, sprouts are wonderful. Different screw, skewers gives you a sweet little uh, bouquet mm -hmm. and um, just a, a different feel. So we have skewers, mm -hmm. just plain old uh, barbecue skewers. <laughs> Buy them at the grocery store. Buy them at the grocery. They have di several different lengths. And you just put it in the middle of your Brussels sprout and you put it in the arrangement. Mm -hmm. I'm going to test this to see if I got it long enough. What do you think? Like right in here? I think so. Okay. There's one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you are a beginner, another thing Kathy and I found. Uh, that gave us confidence in the beginning. You know, you, you cut it, you look at it, you think, what on earth do I do with this first? We found that putting uh, leaves or a collar around the edge helped us. We got, we got that much finished. Then we put maybe something tall in. And uh, I think you'll, you'll have more fun if you are just starting, if you begin that way. Okay, so we're doing, like I said, the monochromatic on this side. Mm -hmm. Where almost everything is we're at the orange green and orange. orange. And do you we, think we need a, like a pretty leaf there? I think what so. What about, uh, do, oh, 
Yes. We love Rex begonias. Mm -hmm. And so many of your, uh, if you're growing things here in Florida, so many of your annuals are starting to get leggy, like your coleus and things like that. So go ahead and cut it and use it. You're going to trim it back anyway. And one of the tricks to remember when you're using coleus, let me find one that doesn't look like it's getting ready to die, because <laughs> uh, they will fade on you. They will. Is to always see how beautiful that color is. Is to strip it down. Get only what you need to have because that stem is supporting whatever is at the end of the stem. That's why you strip the leaves off of a, of a rose. You don't want the leaves to be getting the water. You want the flower to be getting the water. So you strip it down where you just are supporting the part, the color part that you want to use. So that's something important to remember because uh, nobody wants to redo their arrangement every day. It would be good if you change the water in your arrangement every day. It's going to look prettier. Yeah, tuck that in there. I right think that's going to be that's going to be the and goes thing. with my absolutely, absolutely. So, so we're going to show you what this looks like now. This um, is this is not as colorful as this side, but for some of you, maybe your own palette in your house for Thanksgiving or fall is a little bit more muted and you don't want quite so many colors. Maybe you've got a very uh, colorful wallpaper or tablecloth or whatever, and you want to kind of simplify it a little bit. Sometimes monochromatic is, is a really good way to go. Uh, Rebecca Cole, who we actually saw in Jacksonville at the Commerce in Garden Week, uh, <laughs> encouraged us to use the vegetables. We've been using fruits, but we hadn't been using vegetables. But she also said, work in that monochromatic palette from time to time and it's very pleasing to the eye and simplifies the arrangement and you really see all the different textures of the different oranges or the greens and you see all the different uh, manifestations of what you have in your arrangement better than if you've got so many colors it almost overwhelms you we still think this is a lot of fun though <laughs> all right so let's see what monochromatic looks like as you can see, nothing but orange and green going with this wonderful pumpkin. Marilyn's done the skewers of the cauliflower, not the cauliflower, but the broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Yes. We don't eat them, but we do decorate with them. Yeah. No, actually, I do eat them, and Marilyn I does do too. too. They're actually quite good, but I didn't do that as a child for sure. Um, we've got the wonderful marigolds. We've got this hydrangea that is so wonderful, and, and here's that begonia leaf that is just magnificent. So if you're growing those, use those in your arrangement. It just gives a different texture. So what a fun arrangement this is. Some Somebody who sits on one side of your dining room table is going to get a treat in this way, and the person on the other side of your dining room table is going to get a treat this way. If you don't do it on a dining room table, um, you sit it on a sideboard. It's always wonderful to have a mirror. A mirror, yes. yes. <laughs> you, get, you get it. Both sides yes. with that mirror. Yes. But we did mention in our, in our uh, ingredient list that you must be careful. You have cut this pumpkin, it's starting to die, and it's got to have something underneath it that not just a wooden thing, it's got to have something that would stop liquids from getting on your countertop, your your, your granite, your beautiful dining room table, because the juice from this pumpkin will ruin just about anything. Mm -hmm. So we want you to be happy during your holidays. You, you have to think of it as food. Yes. It is fresh food that you've, you've cut open. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it will biodegrade. It's going to deteriorate. <laughs> Onto your table. Right. But yes. as we said, the plastic container that the flower arrangement is in can be lifted out so you can refresh it and rewater it and you can put the pumpkin in your refrigerator. Now let us show you a few of the other things we've got on the table here that we did ahead of time that you can do as well and they're very simple. I'm going to let Marilyn talk about this wonderful little eggplant. I was just thinking when we said, just put this in your refrigerator, and they're saying, have you seen my refrigerator at Thanksgiving? <laughs> Perhaps your garage refrigerator. A cool place on your porch. <laughs> yes, if you live in a cold climate, you're all set. Okay. You're, you're a good um, this is an eggplant, and we try to find an 
eggplant that has a little curvature to it because it lies like on that little silver tray or on a plate uh, wherever. Uh, I cut a little hole in it last night. I couldn't find a tiny container, so I took a, a coffee K-cup pod and emptied one that I, I did not care for the coffee. Sorry, <laughs> Martha. The, <laughs> <laughs> so emptied the coffee out and uh, put a little floral foam in there uh, and water, and here we go, we're off. This was my bleeding heart that I grow in, in the yard. It's just coming out. Mm -hmm. In Florida, it likes the winter mm -hmm. more. It likes the cool. Um, and this was from Ginger, from my neighbor's yard, um, <laughs> who she allows us to cut. But we've been known to cut in yards where we didn't always have permission. But not very often, uh, you know. But Ming fern in the back, <laughs> rabbit's foot fern, a, a tiny. You need smaller things with a smaller profile for this. So that gets you started. Kathy got this gorgeous bouquet at the farm market. We love to patronize our local farm market, mm -hmm. buy all we can uh, locally. And uh, anyway, the tiny things in here were perfect. The little for tiny, our tiny genius, arrangements. Oh, wonderful. This is wonderful. Um, on like this little silver tray is for napkins, but um, it has a little water. <laughs> uh, anyway, this things like this go beautiful. And like we said, a powder room, a tiny place, a bedside table. Um, someone that's in the hospital during the holiday. These are all things that you can make and quickly and take to them. Again, it's the same thing. You've cut into food, so uh, mm -hmm. you do have to think about keeping that cool. But uh, they last days. Mm -hmm. that, that, that'll go on for days. Mm -hmm. And uh, should we do the other little yeah, let's guy? Let's do other, other back little here. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We'll move around a little bit here. Oh, we lost we're, Marilyn. We're, we've gotten off camera. <laughs> we're off camera. <laughs> we're back. We're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell we're doing this? This was in a table setting over there, mm -hmm. and uh, just darling, little pumpkin squash, cut the top off it, really hard to cut, it was very firm. Um, did you want to hold No, I was just going to show the inside. Part, She's the done inside. the same thing with this. Scoop it. This was cut with a knife, though, I believe. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And we scooped it out. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. And you could, sir, I mean, one of these could go at every place setting with pumpkin soup and be just perfect. Mm -hmm. Or, same thing what again. What we would do with it. Yes. Oh, and we also put this, if you wanted a name tag for every person for seating, mm -hmm. you could put their name on any little thing that I just happen to have a hummingbird. So again, a tiny arrangement. This uh, cup was just, you know, something you get condiments in. Uh, Pickles. Charlie likes extra pickles with a sandwich. So, uh, and again, I cut a piece of a hydrangea to be small. A tiny little marigold coxcomb. I put one Brussels sprout in there, mm -hmm. and uh, a little dianthus to give it some punch. Mm -hmm. And uh, away we go. Pretty little thing can sit on a table. Can have this. Buy it. Lovely. Uh huh. So you can have the big pumpkin in the middle of the table, and then you can have everybody have their own little acorn squash, yes. pumpkin squash, on their place place settings. Yes. And so then they have something fun to take home. Acorn with squash. We're right. always we're always trying to think of things that you can do that are simple and fun and creative, mm -hmm. and maybe not following all the rules of, of flower arranging, not being you know, what, uh, or any tall <laughs> or anything else. But, you know, if you wanted to keep this in the middle of, of your table while you're dining, you could cut your palmetto down further, uh, you know, and so you still have that division of two arrangements for your table. Right. <laughs> but but sure. we just think it's so, it's so beautiful, and we think this is the most fun thing you can do with a pumpkin other than carving a cute jack o' lantern. And these pumpkins probably don't lend themselves to that because they're a little bit thicker, mm. they're a little bit tougher, and uh, but so unusual and wonderful. And you see, like I said, gourds and, and the Cinderella pumpkin and the standard white pumpkin. We have a yellow one back here. So 
you usually have to look at, for these early in the season. If you're going to get these unusual pumpkins, you're going to have to get them in September. And then just keep them in a cool, dry place, and then you're ready to, for prime time in November. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. We, yes. we love seeing you. We miss seeing you in person. We do. But, but we, times will change. Times will get better. We'll be back together We'll all be again. back. Yes. That's right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, it's Anne Crawford, the reference and adult services librarian at the Ponte Vedra Beach Branch Libraries. Wasn't that an incredible presentation? Are you just ready to go out and buy a pumpkin and dive on in and make this arrangement? We certainly hope that you are. But we want to let you know that's not the only arrangement you're going to learn how to make today. So consider this your little restroom break, time to reset your table, get out your new ingredients for that holiday arrangement inspired by Downton Abbey because that's what's coming up next. Right after this introduction, you'll have a new list of materials that you can use. Fortunately, some of the um, implements that you'll be using will stay the same. It'll just be the ingredients, the flowers and the foliage that will be a little bit different. And you'll have a whole new table spread because that's what the, that's what the Sisterhood of the Traveling Plants does. They not only show you how to make really inventive, original um, and fun arrangements with food and with flowers. They also show you some great ways to present things with table setting, ways to use mirrors, ways to do things that just make it that much more special. Far more special than just buying something at the store. So that's what they're encouraging you to do. They're encouraging you to use your imagination, have fun, have a few laughs along the way, and just enjoy yourselves. Because really, isn't that what we all want to do at the holidays? So again, take a break, get reset, and get ready to dive into the holidays with Downton Abbey with food and flowers. And we'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. We changed our aprons, <laughs> and as you can see, we're in our favorite place with with our family, our extended family here, mm -hmm. Downton Abbey, and we've been doing Downton Abbey for probably the better part of six years, since, maybe seven it's years. Inception. Since inception, yes. <laughs> and uh, so we've been showing you how to do it somewhat on a budget uh, to get the style of the Crawley House, the the wonderful High Clare Castle, but not the High Clare budget. The wonderful thing about the library is they have so many fun things. Mary, let's show them that book. That's the that's mm. a new book. Oh, a cookbook. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It just happens to be open to spicy dark gingerbread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, the book about the series itself, and uh, they have all the episodes, all the seasons of Downton Abbey that you can check out, as well as the movie. And we're hoping they're working on a second movie. We, we do we hope. We do, fingers crossed. Right, right. Violet is still, was still alive at the end of the last yes. movie, but I think she was moving stage left. She was trying we to get off the stage. Her. I hope they don't let her go. <laughs> but what we're going to do now is to do an arrangement for you that would be suitable for your either your uh, Christmas table, your holiday table, and maybe could carry you the whole way to New Year's mm -hmm. because sometimes you want to, yes. you know, you want to decorate your house for both. The lovely linens we have here we got from Trey Sebastian, which yes. isn't in business anymore in St. Augustine. But we know you've got some linens, some beautiful linens. And this is the time of the year not only to bring out the linens, but bring out your china, your crystal, your silver. Um, you don't count on your children to want it. So you may as well use it yes. because it probably will be appearing yes. in a garage sale yes. <laughs> after your call. <gone. Yes. laughs> but we hope not. But uh, if you if you have it, go ahead and get it out and have some fun with it. Now we're working with, like we said, Downton on a budget. So instead of a silver urn, we're actually using mercury glass. And we love mercury glass, but we learned from our first yes. foray with mercury glass you should never put water in contact with the glass. So we have a plastic liner that slides right down in the glass. 
and it will keep all the arrangement, all the materials off of the mercury part of it because that's just a coating. And if you get it in contact with water that has all the chemicals that we have to have to have the water be good, it might take the shine off the glass. So this way you protect yes. it, but yes. uh, you get the effect of it. Now, you might not want to use silver. Your, your color scheme in your dining room or your, your wherever you're entertaining might be more inclined towards, this is carnival glass. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful big opening, just like this big opening could make a beautiful arrangement. Or you might want to use something that's silver. This is actually plate. This is right. not real silver, but you might have that. It but, has the effect. Right. Mm -hmm. But once again, because we've used uh, Marilyn's lovely Christoffel uh, teapot, teapot. Yeah. line that uh, silver thing because silver does not like the water either and, mm -hmm. you, and you don't want to take a chance with that. But this way you can bring out some uh, porcelain, just some of the fun things that you've got tucked away that you may not be using Cut every glass. day. Cut glass. Cut glass. great. Oh, wonderful. Holiday, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're showing you a couple of decorative candles here. If you want to stay, stay true to, you know, the Downton tradition, you don't only have white candles. but. You know, we don't have to do everything down and stuff. Yeah. Why don't They're you pretty. explain to them on the place setting what we've done there? Okay, so once again, we've done little, uh, a placeholder effect. And this is mercury glass again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this one took, I need to, am I out yeah. of the, yeah. 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 I don't want you to I'm out of my leave. frame. <laughs> <laughs> my husband would say again. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, just a little plastic drinking cup. And uh, it fit right in there. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of things like that that you'll find liners that work. And uh, this is again hydrangea, hypericum, uh, coleus, which we have, it's fading now for us, mm -hmm. isn't it? But mm -hmm. um, we have it in abundance mm -hmm. and beautiful uh, colors in it. Uh, protea, uh, again, a Rex begonia leaf, mm -hmm. which um, I lost mine this summer, but Kathy has a ginormous one, so we're lucky with that. And um, mm, mm, uh, Dusty Miller. Dusty Miller, again, right. Mm -hmm. There's um, a notched leaf that you could get, and this is kind of a mix. It's, Did you notice? Is. This is kind of, it, it's like, yes. it's gonna grow up to be smooth, I think. Mm -hmm. But lamb's ear is just so great mm -hmm. at holiday time with, uh, if you want to do, like the new flower arrangement, uh, arrangement that I've, I'm going to try this year in my daughter's house, I hope, uh, is all green and white in mm -hmm. silver. And uh, it's from Flower Magazine and they're using white amaryllis mm -hmm. and a, an abundance of other things, some that we can get, some we can't, but uh, we can improvise. So anyway, that's just a, a how you can make a sweet little placeholder uh, arrangement in no time. Another book that uh, we're, we'll share with you, and the, the library has a copy of this, and it's mm. called The Language of Flowers. And the interesting thing about this is that sweet little arrangement right there has hydrangea in it, and hydrangea says, I don't care for you at all. And so you have to ignore the message that it's sending, but it's kind of fun to look at some of the different flowers, the deep red rose is that deep and mature and passionate love that you have, not that pale rose, which is uh, more uh, pristine and more demure, uh, demure mm -hmm. and starting out kind of love, not, not something that's stood the test of time like Cora and Robert have done. Yes. Uh, so it's kind of fun to look, this, look at a book like this and see what your flower arrangement is saying if you want it to actually send a message, but just to see what the Victorians thought yes. about Victorians flowers. Victorians couldn't, uh, they held back. They were very restrained. Mm -hmm. So they sent messaging. Their code was with flowers. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're a beginner at this, get the language of flowers mm -hmm. from your library mm -hmm. because you can send all kinds of <laughs> you can send a lovely message nothing. that really says, I don't like you at all. And yes, you can. <laughs> but it's still a pretty good arrangement. Or you can send one that says, you know, I, 
I'm sad, I'm sorry, um, I feel for what you're going through. And sometimes that's easier expressed with flowers than it is for you to say the words to your friend or your, your acquaintance or your family member. So uh, it's a lovely idea and a fun thing to do. And we will be using the language of flowers in our January show that we're doing for the library, which is about the library book. So you'll hear yes, more about the, the that. The actual book mm -hmm. being read by the county library system will be the library book. Mm -hmm. And it's great fun, because it is all about libraries and how much they bring to the community. Once again, all of this that we're doing today is sponsored by the Friends of the Ponte Vedra Branch Library. And all of the libraries have friends groups that sponsor imp important programming and things that could not be done if they didn't raise the funds and, and give the libraries the means to do them. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're not a friend of a library, you should be, you should be. The library is the heart of almost every community that it serves. All right, so we've got Flower Magazine, which is one of our favorite uh, magazines. That's the one with the green and white. And, yes, <laughs> and we are going to attempt to do an arrangement much like the one pictured here. It's a mass of roses, and they may also have some peonies. We're not able to get peonies, but we have lovely roses. So we're gonna construct something in this container that will kind of resemble this. It won't be exactly like this, but it'll be very similar. It's our inspiration. Right. And that's exactly. all you really need. Right. Something that inspires you and you build it the way you pleases you from, from that point on. Mm -hmm. And the colors that work for you. Yes. Uh, you might have a house that doesn't red doesn't work in. Mm -hmm. And so you might at Christmas and New Year's rather do apricots and creams and greens and things like that. Uh, or you may be that person that likes that kick of red and red works for you. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we're gonna use shades of red and pink. So uh, we want you to follow along with us. We, we, you'll get a listing. I think you already have a listing of the flowers that we're gonna use. And we're going to construct it right here in front of you. So we're gonna turn the container around. We've got some little fairy lights here that add a little <laughs> bit and we're gonna work on it. I think we're going to start with our protea. Let's okay. Get our protea up. Um, yes, scissors. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. They're here. Okay. okay. All righty. Mm. Let's get some. Okay. How many do you think? I think three. three. Mm -hmm. We like odd numbers. Yeah. This is this is called we'll Safari Sunset, mm -hmm. and it's a great it's a great um, accent piece. It has great coloration. It even has just a pretty stem. So if you have the stems left over, you can cut them and put them in arrangements and they're, they're pretty and they hold their color. Some uh, of the really bright and, and uh, pretty uh, deep colors don't stay like they should, but yeah. Safari Sunset has never failed us, which is wonderful. Okay, keep that back a little bit. We're working once again in Oasis. Um, we want to get away from Oasis. We do. But um, in tall, slender containers, the chicken wire is not as easy to work with. Uh, we have some coated chicken wire that we're using, but it's much better in an open, wider. Like, I think we could do it in Yeah, you might be able to do the chicken wire in something yes. this big. But I think in this upright, thing. And, and you can buy this chicken wire at a, a floral supply online or wherever if you have mm -hmm. one near you. And uh, it's dark green and it's coated a little mm -hmm. bit because you're probably thinking it will tear up your hands. Yeah, they've tried to make it a little bit more user friendly. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to work away from materials that fill our landfills and, you know, aren't Yes. necessarily good for our environment. Yes, we uh, try to repurpose mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. We use things over and over again. That's why we use plastic containers inside because we can reuse them over and over mm -hmm. again. At least you're reusing it. Mm -hmm. You're not just immediately putting it in a landfill. So do you want some Let's, let's start with our roses. roses. Uh, I think we'll start with the red ones red. first. The small okay. ones first, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try okay. here's the small, the small guys. This and small. once again, remember we talked about in our last, last segment taking all the thorns off, which on these kind of roses are 
kind of substantial. Yes. And uh, and then also peeling off the outer leaves that might not be so good, but get rid of all the leaf, all the foliage on the rose, because you really want the water to support the, the head of the rose, not, not something else. And we'll cut it again as we're putting it in so it gets a new surface to, to draw from. And um, these roses, kind of slight scent. You don't see much, uh, much in the way of a scented rose anymore, which is a, a kind of a shame, kind of a part of, of getting the more, most perfect I think bloom. Maybe these pink ones do. Yeah, I guess when we brought them in the yeah, building, we'll have to we'll have to test them as they come past mm -hmm. us. What uh, you know, which ones I actually do. More red. Um, let's go with just the three at first and okay. see how that works. We'll go down with that a little bit more. Okay. My nose is itching. Have you ever found that when you're in the dentist chair, your nose just goes crazy? <laughs> it's because you can't touch anything. You're, yes. You're so restrained. <laughs> okay. All Great. righty. Okay. So let's let's go. We have to leave room for that. Yeah, we will. Oh. Uh, maybe that'll tuck up in there. Okay. Okay. Let's go with the next row. Like what? this. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Is that the three? Oh, you think that's, yeah, that's the next one. I like Now, that. these are yes. called, we got these at Trader Joe's right here in Jacksonville Beach. And these are called country roses. And they very much look like a David Austin they rose. They do. These are very they down the, to. Yeah, they have <laughs> the flat top. Mm -hmm. And they have the dense. Uh, uh, and they're know, scented. <laughs> oh, they are. See, how that's delightful. What you're doing it. How yes. delightful. So. Uh, you know, look around, see what you have. Uh, everything that we've done in both segments here came from a grocery store. So you don't have to go to a florist to get these necessarily. We don't want to show you things that you'd have to have a yes. florist to do. Yes, we do. That would just, uh, you know, that would limit the things that you could do. So we do this with grocery store flowers and, um, you know, and we try to, uh, you know, appeal to different colorations that might work in your house or you know might be good for you maybe one more okay. and um and we want to make sure this yeah. is this uh arrangement could very well go in the middle middle of your dining room table but it also might be good if you once again if you take it off the table to put it in front of a mirror now, yes. one thing we have done is we're, we set this on a mirror. There's a mirror underneath this uh, mercury glass container. Mm -hmm. And that way you see the arrangement as it goes down on the table. So that's another little trick. Plus it brings some light onto your table. So if you have a, just a round disc of mirror, which is what we've got here, uh, that's just a pretty way. The lights above are gonna hit the mirror so it's gonna light up your arrangement. And that, you know, nothing wrong with having a little bit more light on our on flowers. Sure. Yeah, well, we're going to oh, make sure oh, those trees kind of getting <laughs> yes. drawn back. Okay, okay so let's, let's go to the lighter. The lighter. Mm -hmm. The lightest of them all. Now, these roses were also called country roses, but we thought when we saw them, they looked so much like peonies. We were amazed they weren't yeah. peonies because they are balls. I mean, really, a ball. So it looks a lot like a peony. The great thing about a rose is it's going to last, and um, it, you know, it will unfurl a little bit. Whereas a peony, sometimes when we get them here, they stay in that ball state; they never really bloom out. But if you can get them, and sometimes you see them in our area around, let me cut this again, uh, on a slant, around Christmas, you know, sometimes we see them. We do. And fresh market. We do. Uh huh. And so um, it's hard to get them to last. Yes, you know you really yeah. need to be in a place where you they're grown. Mm -hmm. We grew them in Georgia. Yes, we're just not cold enough. But you can. But I grew them in Georgia. You have to have that cold. Absolutely, you do have to have some cold. They do like a a little uh, frostiness, and they're you know they're a bulb plant, so they they don't go away. I think uh, a very dear friend of mine dug up my pennies and she's probably still uh, collecting them. She was wonderful with flowers, so she's kept them alive. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm still in Georgia, they'd still be alive with me, 
but she's kept them alive and, uh, and they're wonderful. And they have a heavenly scent. They really do. Okay, I'm trying to get that down in there. For some reason, when I hit some of the oasis is tough. Can you push it down any me. further to get a little bit, maybe another? Yeah, that's good. That's are, we, good. are we there? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think you're getting there. I think you're getting <laughs> okay. there. Okay. Okay. So let's take one of these down low. Mm -hmm. Let's see, even though we're, we're kind of doing an ombre thing where you're going from dark to light mm -hmm. in steps but, um, shade we can get you. we can get one back here in the back mm -hmm. cuz we want another sure. one yeah mm -hmm. let's do another one cuz those are so beautiful and uh, come here the fairest of them all. Mm -hmm. they, but they are that is, that's a little bonus that we got some scent finally yes uh, you know we we don't always do that we don't always get that okay so now we're going to work in some uh, Dusty Miller that we showed uh, you in section one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna do that on one side. We're gonna take the white on one side, and then we're gonna work the white out the other side too. So let me cut that down some. Do you want me to go ahead and cut, be cutting yeah. this? We are gonna add. We can't do an arrangement without a fruit or a vegetable, and we feel like a fruit is more appropriate at Christmas. Uh, Marilyn and I both uh, were married and doing flowers in the 80s we won't give away our age not right? together we not didn't together. know each no, other we didn't know each other but we were doing the williamsburg type flowers and of course the apple arch you had fruit and everything else but it wasn't really right with your flowers so uh when we started together we, we, it was kind of natural to use a fruit in an arrangement it seemed that flowers and fruits went together but the vegetables were a discovery and they are, they're just delightful. And this is such a good time of the year for vegetables. So, Marilyn, show them what you do with them. Okay, so a pomegranate. We, I think you can see that. Yeah. yeah. You can see that star Cut design. It through. The star design is beautiful. Um, I think one tip, they do weep. <laughs> they do. So, if you put it on a paper towel for a little while, it soaks that up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Settles and, down. Mm -hmm. And then onto the skewer again. And I just broke the skewer. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have extra skewers. <laughs> That's why you have extra of everything. Yes. Now back when we started doing sisterhood events, you know, we were doing it on our budget. So we were hot gluing <laughs> petals <laughs> and flowers. And we have done some But the friends. Like, right in there? Yeah. Oh, that's or? perfect. Oh, yeah, I think so. Do you? Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll see. see. They'll see. They'll if see. It'll... Now, the good thing is she's cut the, she's cut the uh, pomegranate in half. So you could put this other half in your refrigerator in some plastic. It's a we're we beads. <laughs> we're weeping. <laughs> Uh, and so if that one dries out and shrinks a little bit, you've got the other half to work with. Trying to keep that pink from getting on our tablecloth. Our, yes. our beautiful tablecloth yes. here. Oh, okay. just shot a good. <laughs> okay. okay, I tried a double skewer because this is yeah. He's, heavy. Yeah. So I just added another yeah, sometimes one. Sometimes you just have to have two. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. All right. All right. Let's work. We're, we're going to work around the base now. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some stock. We're going to do the stock out this way. Maybe you can go ahead and get the stock okay, up. Okay. Sure. And I'm going to take some things down lower here. I'm going to do a little bit more. You hand me a little bit more of the dusty mm -hmm. more. And when you cut it like that, you have two halves, so you can use it elsewhere mm -hmm. should you want. Okay. You wanted a stock. Uh, you do the stock, and I'll do the rest of the dusty mower, and we'll okay. start working in some. We have this beautiful passion flower vine. Uh, okay. You know, sometimes that, that, to that for this okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, that oh. sometimes the passion flower vine is going to hold up. Sometimes it doesn't. But we are going to use some seeded eucalyptus, and it will it will stay. It will stay better than the passion flower vine. But we love the look of the passion flower vine. This is that red. It's called red, but it actually is a burgundy, and it's just delightful. It's just beautiful, and it's beautiful right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it, this is mm -hmm. its time of the year to be gorgeous. So uh, we're trying to use flowers and, and materials That's that brilliant. you have in your uh, in your yard, and uh, or maybe your neighbor's yard. 
uh, <laughs> a good friend's yard. Somebody you've yet to meet, but will be a good friend's yard. There's um, reasons why we have fierce yeah. scissors in yeah. our glove box. <laughs> we can strike quickly in the car. Yeah, yeah. we yes. just do a little pruning. Yeah, yes. that's all we're doing. We're helping little, the county yeah. maintain its yeah beauty. Yes. They intact. Yeah. Yes. Are you uh, since okay? It, I'll like let you to go. Here, I'll let you, yeah, or that uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm I gonna think we're going to have to. While she's doing that, I'm going to add a few more roses. You can never have too many roses. True. Okay. Beautiful thing. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Like I said, all came from grocery stores, so you can get them too. Not just us. They're there for the taking. And Trader Joe's has been great. Mm -hmm. um, we yeah, just got a Whole Foods in Jacksonville we're, Beach. Yes, we're using Beautiful that. Beautiful store. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're doing a lot mm -hmm. to keep it clean and safe. Yes. And, and uh, the, the people are very responsive. Fresh to Market mm -hmm. is another that we love and have loved for years. Mm -hmm. So you have lots of alternatives. Uh, the, the grocery stores have gone to more upmarket things, and so they're having more unusual flowers. And uh, Trader Joe's probably has the widest variety of flowers of any location. But, um, I think maybe and one more there, maybe down low. Do you, will he fit over there or I not? do. Let's okay. try. See if he will. But I, I like Let's some more stock, okay. too. I don't want to count right. the stock out. I don't, because that, that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we bring this it arrangement is going to be, like we said, deep red, pink, mm -hmm. up to pale pink. If you were doing it for New Year's only, you might do it all in cream and green and maybe some apricot, you know, take it out of the red range. But we feel like at Christmas, uh, some version of red works in almost everyone's mm -hmm. home. So, and there's something about red that cheers you up and, and makes you feel like it's the holidays. Uh, so, uh, you know, find a shade that will work for you and find a flower that you like. Um, we had hoped to show you uh, what, the, what they call a, uh, a rose lily. Yes. Uh, we have seen it in, in Christmas uh, arrangements. We, do a, we normally do, the Garden Club of St. Augustine normally does a Christmas tour of homes, and we don't get to do it this year, but we'll be back. And uh, we usually have rose lilies in our arrangements. So uh, anyway, you can see how we're developing here. We've got a lot of roses, a lot of lot going on, a lot that's uh, you know a lot of coloration, a lot of now we're gonna we're gonna actually put some stems. I'll bring it up. Now we're gonna work on the back of the arrangement to make it as pretty as the front of the mm -hmm. arrangement. Because and this is a vine that's a passion vine with uh, three big flowers that will come out in the next day or so. Mm -hmm. All right, so you want some big reds? Yeah, down there. the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take this mid-range up in the middle here and get him down a little bit. I'm not very good at pushing through this oasis for some reason. Okay. <laughs> yeah, get on one of those thorns. <laughs> <laughs> but the great thing about roses is they are tough in general. If you if you always you, know, you amazing. always pinch the rose to make sure it's got plenty of hydration in it to make sure it's fresh. Just gently. But if it's, it's firm if, if it's firm you know you've got it's and hydrated. You can, and keep keep cutting that stem. Keep cutting that stem because that change will change the water. Change Do, the water. Yes. You know if you feel better putting Sprite or pennies or whatever into it, you can do that. But the most important thing is to change the water because the the bacteria grows in the container and you want to get rid of that, it's especially if you want your arrangement to last. And most of us don't want to be redoing our arrangements all the time. Okay, well, we need some mid-range. I could put Ooh, the other half good. right in there. We could do that. Or do you want, yeah. um, this is how this works when we're doing yes. a live show. Where yeah, we have to Well, shall we do this? Do you want this? Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of ad libbing there. There is on. yeah. <laughs> okay. We call it seed of your pants flower arranging. Right, right. And and you need to you know, Improvise. It you might need to be able it to. might be that you find the best way to do flower arranging like is with a friend. Yes. You know, to have two of you. 
And yes. then you can both do a, a flower arrangement for your Maybe rose. Maybe another one of those here. Yeah, I think I like that. that right around here. Mm -hmm. This is Lakeshore Jasmine. And right now, it's not blooming, but it has wonderful glossy green foliage. So um, it's great to use. I, I started my Lakeshore Jasmine as a shrub. It was, you know, maybe three feet tall. And uh, we kept pruning it, pruning it. It now is, is taller than my house. house. Yes, it's taller than my house. <laughs> so it will shrubs. grow. <laughs> yes. And grow. Can you not uh, get a shrub of it? You yes. Know, yes. Can you, you can keep it pruned. But you, you got to I let it. I let it, just, I let it just keep growing. Okay. Yeah. But the great thing is it has that glossy green foliage that you want to use around the holidays. Uh, you know, this is great because it has small uh, profile foliage. Uh, you know, magnolia is wonderful to use. The only thing bad about magnolia is it kind of takes over. Yes. And so, but it's wonderful to use in an arrangement. And if but, you live in the South, it is abundant and beautiful. Right. Yeah. The little gems are dark mm -hmm. green, uh, mm -hmm. shiny, and on the other side, uh, like a cinnamon velvet that mm -hmm. is just beautiful. It is, it is. Makes a beautiful wreath. Uh, but also really, really good in an arrangement because it's gonna hold its color, it's gonna mm -hmm. hold its shape, it's just gonna be like it is and it dries in place if you mm -hmm. want it to. So that's mm -hmm. good. Okay, I had a thought. we uh, need some light back here. We need some white. We need okay, some stock. and maybe we need moss. To get right. we do. We're running yes. out of real estate. Uh, we oh, we haven't got our berries in here yet. Where's our hypericum? Uh, yeah, we didn't bring our berries mm -hmm. out. We need to do that. Now that's and that's a good thin stem yeah. when you're out of real estate. Nice long. We took all the leaves off because the leaves are just going to take the water away from these berries. Well, and these some leaves last well. Mm -hmm. These do not. Mm -hmm. And in a day or two. Mm -hmm. Now the tiny little leaves we yeah, leave. Yeah, the little <laughs> almost like the cups of the berry. Yeah. They're okay. Yeah. But the bigger leaves like they, back in here. Mm -hmm. you go in yeah, there. just tuck that in, and mm -hmm. we'll tuck this on the other mm -hmm. side. All right. Okay. Maybe like right in there. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Looking good. Looking good. <laughs> Looking good. I'm looking okay. For the gold sticks. Where'd you do the little gold stick? Gold stick. Oh. Gold sticks. Where are they? Long branches. We'll look in a minute. Well, they're, <laughs> they're off stage. I'll go get them in a minute. Oh, well, you our, that on the yes. uh, our technical support. Yes, yeah, right. Our technical will, will. support team. <laughs> You'll our, see in our, our other living tip. being in the room with <laughs> us, which we love. We love. Because, yes. you know, we're used to having all of you in the room with us. Yes. That's very good. Very good. Thank Here they you. come. Here come some of these. It's sticks. great to have a living person yes. beside ourselves. It, it is. It is. <laughs> okay. Now, do we want to tuck any Ming in there? Go, Jess. Go, yeah. Jess. You want any Ming um, or not? We could try it. Okay. I'm going to give you a little Ming, and you can see if it. Ming, it would. It would it would go around the edges if you wanted to cover edges. Well, I, I would, yeah, I was thinking that or moss, but let's try some Yeah, let's try the Ming. Mm -hmm. and, and talk about Ming, because that's a great plant to grow. It, it is not a pretty plant. Mm -hmm. uh, a lady, a very dear elderly lady in our garden circle that Kathy and I both belong to, uh, gave us each a plant, and it is sort of like a bundle of itchy sticks. <laughs> it is with some thorns on it. It's not fun. Um, yes. Not fun, but good. But it's so gross. beautiful and very fine. Um, I'm not sure you can see it well. Works beautifully because you can just cut these off. They're like little Christmas trees mm -hmm. and they work well in individually in small arrangements. So you would love it for that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you grow a plant to really um, fill the need. What fill you're doing. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. do. You grow it to show it. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, we have a program we do call Eight Great Plants that we think you should, everybody should grow. In so, this area. Right, mm -hmm. in our area. Um, because they're so useful. Uh, some of them are not particularly, uh, most of them are pretty plants. Ming is not but so useful. And uh, Marilyn's Ming, same plant, hers is deep green. It is. 
Mine is lime green. Yes. I'm sure it's the soil. The same uh, but, mother ship. Right, right. <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but it, it gives it a different effect. And yes. of course, one is wonderful in the spring. That's what we and do. And one is, is equally magnificent in the fall. So I uh, think the other thing, too, um, even though it isn't a lovely plant to look at, because it's kind of always all hunched over and it responds maybe to the wind uh, mm -hmm. because we live near the ocean, fairly near. I don't know how salt tolerant it is. Do you? It is. Cause is I, it? I'm pretty close. You're close. And it doesn't, right. it doesn't bother it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but um, it, it is soft and uh, lovely to, once you wrangle it, mm -hmm. use in arranging. Mm -hmm. I had a really thought about it. I forgot. Gold gems. Okay, trying to cut these things. We need the now. We need the uh, sheetrock knife. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. Where, where, where did it go? Uh, Here, let me try with these. Yeah, okay, so got it. Okay. I don't know what to do. Oh, not what I do with it. I don't want to do that to you. Okay. That one can go in the middle because it's got enough spread. Straight up. Yeah. All right. Straight up. And then we'll do the other one around ten o'clock. Yeah. But this will, you know. We're going to trim this because you know you almost always get some little little uh, imperfections, mm -hmm. and you just trim them down, mm -hmm. to make them look like look good. Left. Yeah, all right. It gives us a little bit of this height. It's going to come over there. And you know if that's too high for you, then don't do this. Right. This is you, this is just a finishing touch, yeah. and you might like it. You might not. Gold might not be your thing. Silver might be, or just natural stems. You've seen a lot of natural stems. Or hold on to it and put it in for New Year's Eve. Right. Exactly. Refresh your yeah. Arrangement. Change it. Change the look. Mm -hmm. Change the look. We got any broken ones on that? Okay, <laughs> wait, that's wait up at the top. There's oh, one, but yes, I there get is. That. There is. There <laughs> yeah. oh. is. Not. She's taller. She's behaving. Get on now. He's yeah. behaving. Okay. <laughs> Why do I say he's back? Why did I say okay. that? Okay, we need a little more meat back here. Yeah, we have, we'll fill it or a little, little more meat. Right and we love that drapiness that it gives. Like I said, not a pretty plant, kind of irregular, but so functional. So uh, there are many ferns you can grow. That uh, It's a slow grower. That's what I was thinking yes, before. Yes, it is. It it's a be. very slow grower, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, being Sticks. invasive or yeah. something like that. Yes, it's not, not going to take over. No, no. Some ferns will, but not not this one. It is much more okay. a plant. I think we're good. Like asparagus fern or something. Okay, so back to where we started. Let's we'll see if we can rearrange our lights a little bit here because we want you to see what you got. I don't want to mess that. I just got into my passion flower. Can you undo me on that side? I'm trying like to get the red, okay, the red the juice red, off the, the table. That's block. true. Be careful okay. of the pomegranate. Yes. Beware of the pomegranate. I think we're good. We can do some. Well, I'm just gonna. Sure. Just oh, go uh, the passion vine, which marries with everything, uh -huh. has jumped. Has into the light. Found the light. <laughs> so. Anyway, you wouldn't have it on a lazy Susan. <laughs> we have a lazy Susan, so we can go, you know, the whole way We're around it and purposes. look at it from all angles. But we think it's a pretty arrangement. We think that the mercury glass does a good stand-in for silver, and uh, and we think that uh, hopefully Violet would say, "Pretty good job, girls." Mm -hmm. uh, one time she accused Cora of being rather Italian in her her presentation of flowers. A little yes. too wild, a little yes, too yes. informal. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a compliment. Yeah. But hopefully, you know, this will be fun for you to do and you can see the relationship of this arrangement to the place setting because it's got the Dusty mm -hmm. Miller, it's got the mm -hmm. rose, it's got uh, the stock in it and stock itself has a beautiful scent. So and we, so many houses today have gorgeous, huge kitchen islands mm -hmm. that all of these things we've done, the bigger ones today, mm -hmm. are, if you have no other place, you may have a gorgeous uh, kitchen island to mm -hmm. put a big arrangement on if right. you want to go big. Mm -hmm. So we'll say goodbye until January. 
and hope that all of your holidays are happy and safe. Yes, and healthy. Yes. 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 That's what we want for all of you. And we hope to see you in 2021. Why? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you.